Um, so we are recording. Boom. So whoever wants to start off the fishbowl, um, anything that you found of importance about the meeting, feel free to discuss and feel free to share. Uh, so, I mean, one of the things I liked was like from the beginning, I guess from beginning to end was like even even though how old this book is, it still has some of the same principles, some, some of the same standards as we live today. Like be humble, be be respectful like to your elders. Um, to like if you if you know someone of a higher of a higher position than you, then respect them and and at their table as well. And I just one of the things that I pointed out, I don't know how you pronounce the word, I think it's Matt, M A A T. Uh, Matt. 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 Yeah, I like I liked when they brought that up because they brought that up more than once too. Um, if you're like a great leader, if you want to live a life um, righteousness and good, then follow those standards and you'll live a life of wealth and richness. So anybody else is free to jump in after Mark. Thank you, Mark. Um, I liked um, the concept of a whole reading because what I thought, like got from it is I've got a sense of like the Bible because um, I used to take like Bible classes and Bible reading classes. And most of it, it was just pretty much God's disciples letting us know um, how to live our lives humbly and how to not pursue what we have. But one text that I really liked was um, number 10. Um, it was from part one and it was saying if you're poor um, don't greed over people that even if they're wealthy and I um, and I really like that because um, it kind of contradicts what people say when someone goes through a loss or is going through a hard time that we usually say that I've been through it and I got over it and in number 10 it says don't do that don't say that I've been where you are at just be humble and don't be arrogant towards them. Be, and I didn't think of it that way. And that kind of like contradicts what I knew of how to comfort somebody with, with your own experiences. And that kind of was something that I thought was really good to keep in there. And it was just a very good, um, and also I liked number 30. I talked about it in my group and it was, it kind of gave me a sense of today's society of how when people, um, are born in poor neighborhoods or have a really rough childhood they're able to um, go to college or have a better lifestyle when they're older and they come back to their community or their families and they help them as well um, get out or have a better lifestyle too. Claudia would you be okay reading either um, number 10 or number 30 just so the class kind of has an idea of what you're talking about? Yeah I'll read um I can read both if that's fine. Yeah. Um, number 10 it says if you're poor then serve the person worth of your contact may it be wealth with God do not bring up the fact that once you was once poor do not be arrogant towards him just because you know about his former state respect him now for his pro um, position of authority as fortune and obeys his own law and it and is her will it will be God's gift a God who makes him worthy and who protects him while he sleeps or can turn away from him. That's number 10. And then number 30, it says, if you are great after being humble, if you are gained your wealth after being poor, then go to your town that you know and knows you former condition. Don't put your trust in your newly acquired wealth, which has come from your gift from God. If you do one day, someone who is poor may very well overtake you. Yeah, let's, let's just kind of spend a minute in that, right? Um, because to me, one, Claudia is spot on in her analysis of what that says, but the lesson in that is, is really heavy, right? So if you are great after having been humble, right? So you have come to this position to where you're great, but your former state, you're humbled, right? If you had gained your wealth after having been poor, so you got your money up, you secured your bag, but before you did that, you was poor, right? And then go to a town that you know and that knows your former condition. So, right, like Claudia says, you go off to college. Before you left college, though, you was poor and you was humble. You go to college, you got your money up, you got some information, and now you come back to your home place, right? Don't put your trust in your newly acquired wealth 
which has come to you as a gift of God, right? So essentially what that is saying, that wealth that you got, really you didn't do nothing to obtain that. That's a gift from God, right? So don't put your security in that wealth because we, we remember that it's a gift from God, right? So it's not you who made yourself wealthy, it's the blessings from the most high that provided you that wealth, right? If you do, one day, someone there who is poor may very well overtake you, right? And to me, you see this all the time, especially with celebrities, when they go back to the hood and they get robbed, right? That's exactly what this is talking about, right? Like, and I'm not saying it to be funny, but this is, this is what he's saying, right? If you come from a place that is impoverished and you were impoverished when you were in that place and you come back to that place flaunting your wealth, flaunting your knowledge, and you thinking that you're better than those who exist within that place, they will come for you and they will overtake you is what the passage says, right? So when we think about these things, these are very practical ways to engage in the ways to live your life, right? Um, to, to Mark's point, right, even as old as this is, it still has relevance to what we're dealing with today, right? Um, so we still have, what, three more people in the fishbowl? Does anybody else want to go next? I'll, I'll go next. Go ahead, guys. Um, connecting back to what Mark was saying, um, I, that's something I found interesting, how this book was, I believe, 2,000 years old, and yet it still has some relevance to how society works today. And specifically number two, where it says like, if you're in a dispute with someone, I guess be the bigger person and have some self-control and learn to walk away from it and like cross your arms and walk away. And that's what we're basically taught in school and by our parents. Also about what Claudia was saying, not being greedy, I believe. Yeah. Um, not being greedy and giving back to others. That's what we're also taught in school and also taught by our parents. And this also reminded me a lot of church school because it definitely has some connections to God and how we're taught. Thank you, Yasmin. Um, next, uh, Gabriella, I think, is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I agree. I think like a lot of these concepts are just really good ways of like living. It provides a lot of like knowledge and lessons. And then um, something that I liked that was said was um, basically follow your heart over like wealth. And I think that was a really good concept because I feel like in today's society, especially like Western society, it's really ingrained to just literally work yourself to death. And I like that concept that is saying like money literally means nothing if you're unhappy, so you should follow your heart. So that was one of my favorite like passages. Thank you. And then we have one more. Um, after reading this, I felt like the book was like a book of like life lessons and guidance to provide you know people with like wisdom or advice that they may acquire like through experience and one passage that stood out to me was passage seven and i'll read it it says if you are one amongst guests at the table of a person who is more powerful than you take what the person gives just as it is said before you look at what is before you and from that passage, I felt like it's saying like rub off on someone that's, you know, may have more knowledge than you and take what they bring and try to like incorporate it in your life and go about things in life. And I don't know, it made me feel like consider the way I do things in life and maybe change my ways. So that's what I got from the book. So, and just if I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna continue trying, trying, excuse me. Tanaya. Tanaya, that's why I asked you. Thank you. I'm going to get that. Tanaya. I'm going to continue where you left off. Um, don't stare at your host. Don't speak to him until he asks. One does not know what may displease him. Speak when he has spoken to you. Then your words will please the heart. The man who has plenty of the means of existence acts as his ka commands. And when you say ka, it just means um, your spirit, right? Um, so I'm just checking the chat. Uh, yeah. right, my fault, y'all. So, um, so this the ka is just the spirit, right? 
It is the Ka that makes his hand stretch out. The, the great man guides to the chosen man. Thus, eating is under the direction of God. It is a fool who complains about it, right? So Tiana is exactly right. It's, it's about, right, how to um, place yourself around people who may be a little bit more of an elevated status than you, but then it's also telling, and that way they could rub off on you, but it's also telling you how to conduct yourself when you're around those individuals, right? Don't speak until you're spoken to, right? And, and, and if you do have some, if you are speaking, make sure you have something to say, something of value, so that way he can see value in you, right? Um, so that is essentially how the fishbowl will go, right? It, it's nothing too strenuous, it's nothing too hard, it's just literally talking about what you experienced in, your, in the reading, which you thought was important, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's, it's nothing too egregious. So that's essentially what I'll be looking for each week. Um, having your journal with you will help. Um, we may not do the breakout rooms each week, but I wanted to do that today just to kind of get you guys in the habit of talking about your ideas. So that way, when you come to the fishbowl, um, nobody does not have anything to say. But what I'm interested in now, because um, we did talk about the material of the book, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys discussed in your breakout groups as it pertains to how the reading made you feel. Like, what was the process? What was your affect? while you were going through the readings. And, and we'll open it up to whoever wants to share, preferably somebody who has not spoken yet. Uh, is it okay for me to go? Yeah, go for it. All right. uh, so reading all those passages, it really made me like, I tried connecting in a lot to the Bible because like other people mentioned, like there are some linkages, but what was different for me from the Bible was that these passages talk a, a lot more about how to treat the people above you and how to treat the people below you compared to the Bible. Well, from what the little things that I know from church is that it talks a lot more about treating your family and your neighbors, like people equal to you. Mm -hmm. And it just really, that's the different level that I saw because I mean, I've never read anything else where it says people you to a certain way and people below you a different way. Yeah, that, that's a very good point, Victor, in the sense of, is very specified in the sense of you know how to treat somebody who's in a status symbol above you, how to treat somebody who may be below you. You know, that's, that's a very, very good point. Um, anybody else? I think Mark mentioned this um, in the fishbowl, but I think that all of the passages really connect to um, what we deal with on a daily kind of. Um, and it's interesting because this book being thousands, thousands of years old, um, it really shows that humanity really hasn't changed. It shows that we are still kind of um, in the same, I guess, we're, we're dealing with the same things and we're, we should be handling things the same way that they've been handled um, forever, really. And um, I mentioned in my breakout room, um, uh, point number two, I paraphrased it by saying maintaining self-control and paying no attention to people who try to pick fights or arguments with you. And that one really connects to me because I deal with a lot of confrontational people on a daily basis, friends, family, or people in the workplace, in my workplace. And um, it is vital for me to remember that I can't match their anger or rage because then I'll just make myself as bad as them and I'll um, worsen the situation. Uh, Dwayne, where, where do you work, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'm a manager, a facility manager for um, a recreation department in Alameda, California. Okay. Um, and the reason why I asked is to get that context because you said you're a manager. So what I would ask of you, man, because how you personalize it to your experience, right? Um, mm -hmm. When you get a chance, go back and read, I believe it's read two, three, and four, right? Because their instructions on, on kind of to piggyback off of Victor's point, because mm -hmm. it's saying, so I think two is how to interact with somebody who is your superior, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think three is how to interact with somebody who's equal to you. And then four is how to interact with somebody who's below you. So, so one way to think about it would be like, um, four is when you're at work and you are dealing with your employees, that's when this instruction will come into play, right? 
Um, three may be like your sibling, um, a classmate, because that's your equal, right? And then right. two may be dealing with your manager or your moms or your pops or somebody who is an authority of you, right? Right. And, and, um, and I just, I'm making this, pointing this out to you because there's a little nuance into each of those steps and each of the ways to go about it. Because um, according to this, it, not, it may not require you to re hold your tongue in that certain circumstance. Right, you may need to flex your authority, maybe. You know what I mean? So you just gotta you wanna be tentative to the sudden shifts of the instruction that they're giving you based on your position, right? Right, absolutely. Thank yeah. you. But that's a great way of applying it to your life. And that's your and so what Dwayne just did is what we call the analysis portion of your journal, right? So when I ask you guys to make an analysis, Dwayne's analysis, right, within our conversation now, it fits his workplace, right? So that helps him make sense of the reading. So when I talk about making an analysis, that, that's, that's something that I, um, I'm mentioning. The majority of you guys are doing your analysis when you're saying, I compared it to the Bible, right? That's another analysis that you're making. Um, a lot of you pointed out that it's still relevant today, right? So when I say your contemporary analysis, that's exactly what you're doing, right? You're saying, well, even though this is the oldest book in the world, what's being talked about can fit in today's society right now. Right. So I'm trying to speak to these points. So that way you guys kind of have an idea how the journal will like look, feel and sound. Does that make sense? Um, anybody else? How, how did the reading make you feel? What was your experience reading this? So we can speak on it or I can just start calling people randomly. Um, it's up to y'all. I mean, it's cool that I go. Yeah, go for a month. Uh, well, I, I kind of said it a little bit, but I mean, like, just reading through it, um, I just felt like, cause since I'm Catholic, I went to, like, church school, and it's just, like, for like, two years, and I feel like it was kind of, like, the, a little bit of, like, the Ten Commandments, but, like, a longer version of the Ten Commandments, <laughs> and um, I just, like, like, I don't know who exactly said it first, but I was, like, more like uh, like through God or like through compared to the Bible, I feel like I was more more of a religious and how to handle people through that sense. Okay, you know, um, so thank you, Mark, because it uh, brings up a, a good segue and something I kind of want you guys to think about because everybody is, is making the parallel to the Bible or to church, right? So let's kind of take a step back and let's think about the people who we're dealing with right in the society that we're investigating what does it say about a society and we'll do what's called a juxtaposition right you, everybody knows what a juxtaposition is we're compare one thing to the other so again juxtaposing our society to this ancient comedic society right so in our society as you all articulated when you talk about these things it only happens in one arena and that's what the church right so this is the way that our society operates where in this society, in the comedic society, this is not a, really a church text. Um, this is something that will be discussed in their university systems, in their school systems. And this is just a text that was meant for everybody to read, right? So you didn't necessarily have to be inside of a church, inside of a temple um, to come across this information, right? And again, to think, um, to think about one of the desires and designs of the book is to ensure that the members of the society engage in netter nefer good speech so they can communicate with one another at a way that was righteous, right? So what does it say about a society to where things of this nature are not specified to a, a religious institution, but it's a part of the overall society, right? This is pop culture for the ancient comedics, right? So how um, I don't know, I don't know if y'all read magazines, but um, in my day we had like the Source, we had like Double um, XL, these like pop culture magazines, right? So this would be the pop culture magazines of the ancient comedic times. So what does it say about that ancient comedic culture and the type of people who are existing within this culture? Um, I would like to add to that. Um, 
is I, I'm going to take it from the last page of this, um, part two because it says it really um, I already emphasizes already quite your father and the son. Like I would think it would be um, more family oriented that your the father takes his wisdom and experience and then tries to teach it to their son. And then it's either to the son to take it and hear it or take his own route. And that's where um, the last page says from yeah. part two. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite passages when I was reading it this morning. Um, so so, so what, what Claudia is talking about is how this is imbued into the family institution, right? So these are how these teachings are instructing, instructing how the family should operate, right? But let's think about it at a little larger scale on a societal basis. So for those, anybody who took a sociology class? So Mark's shaking his head. So when you talk about sociology, we're dealing about the way that society functions, right? So we're looking at a society, not the individual, but the society. So we're gonna put our sociology hat on right now. What does this text say about the comedic society and about the way that it designs itself and the way that it operates? What does it say about the values of the comedic society? Put it to you this way. What are, what are American values? What are the values Wealth. of this? Wealth. Wealth, what else? A person's character. Say that again, Victor. A person's character, so like if they're charismatic, or like people draw okay. attention to them. Pop popularity then in a, in a more of a sense. Okay, what else? Patriotism. Patriotism. Jenny, what's an American um, value? Um, success. Success. So that could be tied back to wealth. Um, Equality. Jack, I'm sorry, again, Carla? Equality. Equality, okay. We could, we could problematize that a little bit. They say, talk about equality, but do they actually offer equality, right? So um, Jasper, what's an what's a, what's a American value? Um. Freedom? Freedom, okay. Again, another thing that we can prophesize. They talk about it. Yeah, like kind of. Yeah. Um, Isaac, what's an American value? I respect others is the way you want to be treated. So the golden rule, treat one how he wants to be treated. Okay, so I think the last three um, is what is being claimed versus what actually happened, right? But really what, what we hit on the head, Victor hit it, what, um, Jenny hit it, wealth, right, success. We call materialism, how much shit you can accumulate, right? Who got the best shoes? Who got the nicest car, right? That's value, right? Um, what we deem as important is the value, right? So this is what the American values are. Capitalism is an American value, right? Who could get the most, right? Um, so what does this say about the values of the comedic society? Well, it was, it's not like materialistic because I mean, they, were, they really have like a lot of stuff, especially like back then. They didn't kind of compare shoes, they didn't compare anything like that. So I feel it was more like a, more to a person like one-on-one, -on -one, how, how you treat others. How you treat others one on one, and how you treat your elders or your to 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 those who are inferior and superior to you, and like especially there was a kings and queens back in the day, and like the Almighty God, how you how you treated them and how you acted towards them. But like how do you towards that? Right. Um, and, and go ahead, Dwayne. Oh, sorry. Um, I was just gonna say, yeah, uh, Mark is right. They didn't have like a lot of materialistic things. Um, I thought that a lot of the passages related to um, kind of things on a hierarchy level in a society rather than like value and um, materialism. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, it's definitely hierarchical, right? So you know how to treat those above you, right? That's definitely present there. Um, but it's also an order to the hierarchy, right? Because if you read implicitly in the text, they're saying the wealthy are wealthy because God gave them the wealth, right? The people are in power because God put those people in power, right? So at, while, um, 
while Mark, I'm sorry, while Dwayne is absolutely right in, in his assessment of the hierarchy, what I picked up on was they understand the hierarchy to be divine. It's God's doing, right? Um, and, and really another way to think about what Mark is talking about, one of the primary values of comedic society is the idea of relation, right? How we interact with one another, how we treat one another, right? How we speak to one another, right? That's the premier um, values that we could pick up from this, um, from the comedic society from this reading. Did anybody have a, a critique of the reading? Something that they felt um, was left on the table, could have been done better, um, want they, you know, wanted more from the reading. Is there any critiques that you guys have of the reading? I kind of have one, but I mean, I don't know the third reading, but when it says um, you have the wealth because God gave you the wealth. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's some people are wealthy because maybe they steal from the poor and maybe they rob a bank. I mean, God didn't give you that. <laughs> you yeah. did it to yourself. So, and some people try doing that and they end up in like in jail or so worse. So, I mean, I don't fully agree with that statement where God gives you wealth because sometimes people are wealthy for the from bad reasons. Yeah. I, you know, um, I, I agree with that. Even it's a passage in there that says like, obey the laws, right? And, and I, I had to think like, well, shit, what if the laws are unjust? Then do you obey those laws? Um, but I think too, the temporal or a time contextualization is important too, because like, um, so to me, right, we live within a corrupt government system, right? I don't know if you could say the same thing about what was going on during that time, right? I, I to me, it's a lot harder to just go along with the idea of just following the rules because they say so, because the system is so corrupt and the foundations of this country are so corrupt, right? But I don't know if that would be the case in the time of Batahotep. Um, women, the women in the class, is there a particular critique that you guys found in the reading that you would want to share? No? For me, I found the, the text to be very male-centered, right? The only time that women were mentioned, it would be how to treat your wife, right? Or do these things so the relationship between you and your wife are good. But women were never made the subject of conversation, right? Uh, every time that a boss was mentioned or someone of superiority was mentioned, it was always referred to as a man, right? So, so for me, when I think about um, some of the things that ancient comedic society does to support women very well, right? And if you think about last week's lecture, I talked about how they have the two statues in front of the temple and it's a man and a woman, but they're created in the same size, right? To show the equality of man and women. To me, this is kind of not echoing that sentiment because you don't hear women mentioned in positions of power, right? Again, when, they're, when they are brought up, it's objective, not subjective, right? So they're not the subject of conversation, they're the object of the conversation, right? Um, so for me, that was one of the critiques that I have. Um, and it also shows that this notion of patriarchy is, can be traced back to the oldest book in the world, right? Because we're reading it and you see that present in, um, in the pages, right? One thing I would say to problematize what I just said, right? Again, context is important, right? Um, keep in mind, um, it's a common thing, especially in old times to when you refer to man, you're talking about all of humanity, right? And I think um, due to progress, we begin to understand to where, to make that statement, you wanna be able to include women as well, right? So that may be me putting a 2021 lens on a reading that was wrote you know, 2500 BC. But I did pick up on the fact of the way and how women were mentioned in the, in the readings. Um, a couple more comments and we'll call it a day. Anything about what was discussed, anything about how the reading made you feel, um, the reading was confusing, did not like the reading, it was easy. Just anything you wanna share? Give me uh, three more and we'll call it a day.
So Leslie, why don't you share with us your thoughts about the reading, what you felt, what you thought. Well, I actually liked it. I feel like it has a lot to do with good morals that people should follow like right now in society. Thank you. Um, Isis, you want to share? Um, I don't I don't think it was like so much as confusing, but I feel like it's kind of, it's gonna contradict what I said, but it's kind of hard to read. Like you really have to reread it and like get it. You can't just skim over it to get it. Absolutely. And sometimes you have to read it a couple of times to really understand what you what you read. Yeah. Um and, and it, I think it's written like that on purpose. It's really um meant to contemplate and reflect on what's read, right? It's, I, I don't think it's really designed for one sit down read, it's kind of really like you take one parable or one teaching, sit with that for the day and then move on to the next one the next day, right? It's kind of more of meditations than they are just like text to be read out. Um, one last person, we'll call it a day. Uh. I like how the passage it mentions a lot about ma'at. Well, I'm kind of confused on what it is, but saying right here in parentheses where it says it's truth, justice, and righteousness, you can say it's kind of like just always doing what's right or what's supposed to be the proper thing to do. And it just, it teaches a lot about like just always doing the right thing instead of talking about on bad or evil. Yeah. Well, um, we, next week, our reading is dealing specifically with this idea of this notion of ma'at. So you'll get a, um, a better understanding of what that is um, for our readings next week. I'll be emailing those out to you guys again on, on um, Friday, excuse me. But if you want to start them now, um, on our Google Classroom site is the Karanga PDFs. And it should say Karanga ma'at. I want to say there's three of them. But again, each one of those PDFs is for one reading. Um, I'll say this, that reading is a lot more dense than what we just did this week, right? Um, it's a little bit more philosophical. Have your uh, dictionary ready, have your thesaurus ready and give yourself some time. Um, just like how Isis was saying, you can't really skim through this to get an understanding. It's same with the next reading. You're gonna really have to sit down and really take these paragraphs and break them apart to get the, the best understanding that you can. Um, don't expect yourself to know everything. Um, get what you can out of the reading, um, and, and I'm here for the for the to you know help the rest make sense, right? Um, is there any other questions, comments, concerns before we call it a day? All right. So, so for the we don't meet on, so wait, we don't meet on Wednesday, right? No, you guys won't meet on Wednesday. We'll meet again on Monday. Um, either tomorrow, today, tomorrow, or Wednesday, um, early in the day. As soon as I get the login for the extra credit assignment, I'll send that out to you guys. Um, again, it'll be like Wednesday, 2.45-ish. Um, I'll be guest lecturing at Antioch University. Again, that'll be an extra credit opportunity for you guys. As soon as I get the login information, I'll make it available. Um, this will pretty much be the flow of our class. Um, the only thing that may stay or may be taken away is the breakout groups, but this is what the, the course will feel like. We'll have a reading. I'll give my notes on the reading. Um, we'll jump into our fishbowl. And then from our fishbowl, we'll just kind of converse as to what your guys' thoughts are on the reading. So, you know, just kind of give you an idea of how it, how it will be moving forward. Um, other than that, you guys be well, be healthy, um, drink your water. And I, was I have a question. For the extra credit, do we just need to show up or what do you what do Show you up and then you'll write a journal, right? So the same three points. Um, what was the main topic of conversation? How was it a conversation? Um, how do you made your analysis of the conversation and how does it fit to contemporary time? So it'll be the same thing that I'll be looking for in the journal. You'll just be discussing for the extra credit assignment. Cool. Any other questions you got? Yeah, um, is there a certain length that our journals need to be? No, nah, it's totally up to you. Um, it could be a bullet point sentence. It could be a paragraph. You could do a page per, you know, it's totally up to you. But you want to make it so where if you need to go back, right, you could get some information that would be beneficial for you. Um, when it comes to the midterms, you could use these journals as study guides for your midterm, right? So um, do what is best for you to get the information, but I don't care how you guys do that. 
Any other question? What's the reading we have to do for next week again? Next week is Karanga, um, the Ma'at reading. Let me, I'm, I'm going to show you guys where it is on the Google Classroom site. Give me one second, okay? And then I'll, I'll also send this out on Friday, but if you want to start now, I'll show you where it's at. So here is our Google Classroom site under classwork. A uh, few more weeks, one through three. Karanga, Karanga, Karanga. Actually, I'm sorry, it'll be these four. So this is really short. Don't, don't let that worry you. Um, kind of peruse that. But these four PDFs will be our reading. But put most of your attention on the Karanga reading. So one, two, and three. One, two, three. So it'll be Karanga Ma'at part one, Karanga Ma'at part two, Karanga Ma'at part three. Does that answer your guys' question? And then I'll, um, I'll again, I'll be email, um, emailing these out on Friday. But if you want to start now, which I suggest you do, because it is a very dense reading. Um, you know, go ahead and hop on Google Classroom and start that as soon as you can. Any other questions, you guys? Yes. 